there. I mean, Alex Jones may sound crazy, but still has 300 million YouTube. Uh, uh, well, he had 300 million people that have watched him on YouTube. And that sort of fringe, arch conservative, uh, deeply, I think, racist strain is is being tapped into at, at, at crazy profit by people in the media. Well, it is. The Democrats have been on the offensive for far too long, deeming any who oppose their views as racist. But many people don't realize that it was the Republican Party that spearheaded the abolition movement, beginning with Democratic Republican Party member Thomas Jefferson. Yes, Jefferson was a slaveholder, but he included bold anti-slavery language in the original draft of the Declaration of Independence that was removed. As president on March 2, 1807, Jefferson signed the act prohibiting importation of slaves, this act took effect in 1808 and was the earliest allowed under the Constitution. In 1863, Republican President Abraham Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which freed slaves held in the Confederate States. The 13th Amendment to the United States Constitution took effect in December 1865 and finally ended slavery throughout the United States. That year, the Ku Klux Klan was founded. Historian Eric Foner observed that basically, the Klan was the military muscle behind the agenda of the Democratic Party, the plantation owner class, and all those truly afflicted with a mental disorder that is racism. The Klan's purposes were to reverse the interlocking changes sweeping over the South during Reconstruction, to destroy the Republican Party's infrastructure, undermine the Reconstruction state, reestablish control of the black labor force, and restore racial subordination in every aspect of Southern life. By any means necessary, the Klan sought this agenda by threats and violence, including the murder against black and white Republicans. The federal government passed the Force Acts to combat the Klan, but they rose up again. More than 2,000 people were killed, wounded, and otherwise in Louisiana within a few weeks prior to the presidential election of November 1868. Although the parish had registered a Republican majority of 1,071, after the murders, no Republicans voted in the fall elections. White Democrats cast the full vote of that parish for Republican Ulysses S. Grant's opponent. The KKK killed and wounded more than 200 black Republicans. 13 captives were taken from jail and shot. A pile of 25 bodies was found in the woods. The Klan made people vote Democratic and gave them certificates of that fact. Furnifold Simmons, a Democratic chairman, ranted about the pervasiveness of black power in an editorial for the Raleigh News and Observer. The Republican Party has the Negro on its hands, and it has to pay some respect to his wishes, the Democrat explained. Furthermore, to hold the Negro solid, the party must give him local offices in the counties and towns where he is numerous. If the party gives him these local offices, then bad government must follow. The Democrat reasoned with obvious stupidity. In 1939, Planned Parenthood pioneer and leftist Margaret Sanger began the Negro Project. To bring people along willingly, she enlisted black preachers to support sterilization. She outlined the deceitful plan in a letter to Clarence Gamble of the Procter & Gamble Empire. We should hire three or four colored ministers, preferably with social service backgrounds and with engaging personalities. The most successful educational approach to the Negro is through a religious appeal. We don't want the word to go out that we want to exterminate the Negro population. During the 1950s and 1960s, the Klan forged alliances with Southern police departments. Several members of the KKK groups were convicted of murders and the deaths of civil rights workers and children in the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church in Birmingham. Meanwhile, a group of African-American students enrolled in Little Rock Central High School in 1957. Their enrollment was followed by the Little Rock Crisis in which the students were initially prevented from entering the racially segregated school by the governor of Arkansas. It took the intervention of a Republican President Eisenhower to allow the Little Rock Nine to make American civil rights history. As the horrors of the national civil rights battle dragged on, Democratic President LBJ was pressured to sign the Civil Rights Act of 1964, outlawing discrimination based on race, color, religion, sex, or national origin. 
and the Voting Act of 1965, designed to enforce the voting rights guaranteed by the 14th and 15th Amendments to the United States Constitution. But behind closed doors, LBJ said this. These Negroes are getting pretty uppity these days, and that's a problem for us since they've got something now they never had before. The political pull to back up their uppityness. Now, we've got to do something about this. We've got to give them a little something that's just enough to quiet them down, not enough to make a difference. I'll have them, N-word, voting Democratic for the next 200 years. And it's so frustrating to see all of this unfolding and the fact that they're using race-based politics to say, turn your guns in or you're racist. Support Obamacare or you're racist. And whites have been so conditioned to be politically correct that they could say, go jump off a cliff, white person, or you're racist. And the average white person would probably jump off a cliff, even with their newborn baby, if ordered to do so by Rachel Maddow or Ed Schultz. The horrific history of the Democratic Party all but forgotten. Gradually, the Republican Party that had been carrying the torch for the rights of all men was painted into the white Southern racist party by the Democrats. They're trying to act like they have no connection in the past and in the present to what I'm talking about, literally preying on your ignorance. Welfare that had supported the poor white man now went to the 70% of the minority population that gleefully shifted over to the Democratic Party, not even realizing that they had been led into a life of welfare and a system designed to destroy the family. This report is not an endorsement of either party. It is simply the history that we must relearn or be doomed to repeat. See, the globalists are playing everybody off against everybody. That's why we have to unify around ideas and liberty, not around skin color.